This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So I took this guitar to meet with David Beebe and uh, he, he just had a quick sort of feel of this compared to the PRS Silver Sky SE. And we both thought, well, it's this guitar, like the neck and stuff, it feels smoother under the hands. Now, um, part of the reason for that, uh, so the PRS Silver Sky at the moment, like it's got slightly spiky-ish feeling frets. Now I think part of that might be because of weather changes recently so you might have like a little bit of fret sprout. Also my buddy Dave um, he got one and the neck was not super stable on that he found and there were some higher frets. Um, so again let me know your thoughts if you had any negative experience with PRS Silver Sky or positive. Um, in general the three that I've had have been really good except for on two of them the kind of saddles were a bit sharp. Now the point being that this guitar is what, like 350 pounds, and it feels to me just as good to play, uh, feels just as comfortable, if not more, the frets of this kind of fret treatment, you know, where they've rounded the fret edges and uh, rolled the, fr the fingerboard edges. This is the kind of thing that they do on expensive guitars, right? And it made me think like, what is it that makes a guitar cheap or not? And Part of this is probably not a very easy thing to talk about and maybe this is not the place for it, but I think part of it, the, the main cost of building a guitar probably is labor, right? I've built a couple of guitars myself. You can see and see the parts. Um, the painting obviously requires labor. Uh, the fret job requires labor. Assembling the parts, the nut job requires quite a bit of labor. Like there is a, quite a lot of work that goes into making a guitar. And I guess that's the thing with a lot of things that aren't fully automated. The labor is the part that is expensive. I don't know exactly how this sort of stuff works, but you've seen PRS talk about their, their factory operations out in Indonesia with Court. And essentially there are limitations on some of the kind of equipment that they can use, I, I believe, and parts that they can easily get in Indonesia. And so, they kind of work to spec out the guitar from what is available there as well. So that was particularly on the pickup side of things with the PRS Silver Sky SE. They had a certain like set of equipment that they use in the PRS factory, certain amount of parts which they could get access to and they kind of designed the pickups in America from that point of view. Now I think with the Sire we got some different kind of things going on. So I'd say this part here seems to be quite cheap. Uh, the pickups themselves are the cheaper ceramic style, I believe. That's where some of the corners are cut. But in terms of the actual design of the guitar, which it borrows fairly heavily from Sir, you know, is there much difference between a CNC body, which is CNC'd in a Sir factory, versus somewhere in Indonesia? Possibly not. And likewise, when you think about like CNCing an, a neck shape, is there much difference? You know, unless you're a super boutique builder, kind of carving the neck yourself, like Seth Backus does, for example, then potentially all of these necks are going to be relatively similar, right? Whether they're built in Mexico, Indonesia, Japan. If it's a CNC machine, what difference does it make? 
is a question. Um, then I think Sir actually plec their guitars, um, and I don't know if PRS do, I think Gibson do as well. Um, I'm not sure if any of the Indonesian manufactured guitars get plecked, but I know, for instance, the Indonesian Yamaha factories, they started using stainless steel frets in some of their guitars, um, and Ibanez as well. So even in terms of like the premium of parts, the, the cheaper guitars now, I think, compete really well. And the only place really where the savings seem to be are in some of like the pickups, maybe some of the hardware. I mean, this piece of wood is absolutely fine. Uh, I think roasting is another way to, to get past using slightly cheaper or less mature bits of wood. Um, and so literally, I guess what you're ending up paying for in the end is like the quality of the labor. Um, the sires, in my experience, there are like little bits of slop. Uh, they might not be perfectly finished, but in terms of playability, I found them to be really good. Let me know if your experience has been different. Of course, when they're making high volumes of guitars and shipping them across the sea, you'd expect there to be the occasional thing. But like we know from, you know, Gibson, whoever, like anyone who's mass manufacturing instruments, there is going to be a certain amount of uh, stuff that gets through, which may not be great. Um, but I'm really, really quite impressed with the size stuff for the money. I've yet to try jet guitars, which are built in China, and I've not got too much experience with Harley Benton. Now, I know online there are certain folks who are singled out Harley Benton uh, for certain things, and I don't know if there's any way to really participate in these um, Far East-made guitars without dipping your toe into some fairly sketchy ethical stuff. But likewise, your phone is made in these kinds of places. Um, the modelers that I use are as well. Uh, there's, I'm not sure if there's an easy way to get around that. Anyway, but this guitar plays really nicely and I think would be my kind of recommendation for the cheapest guitar that you could buy that is most decent. Um, the pickups might be the first area that I might uh, explore for an upgrade, but aside from that, I think it's basically ready to go. very good guitar I think for that amount of money and I don't think I can think of anything that I would obviously pick around this price range over it in terms of beginner intermediate I think I could even gig this guitar without any worries really um, the frets maybe are not as polished as you might get on a really higher end guitar but those fret edges feel amazing the rounded fretboard feels amazing and it plays really well um, for that kind of money, you're getting quite a lot of guitar, I think. And, you know, you do worry around, around this sort of thing. Is there an ethical issue with buying these cheaper guitars, perhaps for you? Um, not easy to talk about in any case, is it? I don't think maybe... What is the role of cheaper guitars? That's the question as well. Is there any point, you know, like so myself and David have some really good guitars, you know, whether it's the Fibonacci stuff or... K-Lines, uh, Sirs, what is the role of a cheaper guitar in a collection? Is it sort of a, a thing that's necessary? 
Um, why do we care about cheap guitars, I wonder? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I'm using the JC Deluxe preset for the intro as well as the JC Ingrid Crazy. Um, but yeah, you can grab them in the Gumroad link if you want. But yeah, I'd be interested to know some of your thoughts on that.